Hello. Welcome. I'm back, as promised, with the second part of the message that we were speaking on earlier. Weapons that deal with the microscopic residue of Jezebel. I explained that the importance of dealing with this residue is because the stronghold of Jezebel has been assigned to work against the prophets of God, not just the prophets of God, but those who are the servants of God, which will be all of us who are part of the citizenship of the kingdom of God. So it's important that we understand that this force exists. Father God, we come to you asking you to anoint us with the anointing that's been granted, um, that was granted to Jehu to overcome and to destroy the house of Ahab, which covered the stronghold of Jezebel. God, we're asking to anoint our minds, deliver our minds from the mind control of the stronghold of Jezebel. God, anoint our hands, as you've stated in Acts 4.30, to stretch forth and to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of our holy servant, Jesus Christ. God, we ask that you would anoint our hands, the palms of our hands, to lay hands on the sick and to overcome the demonic residue that was left by the palms of the hands of Jezebel. Protect us, O God against those demonic forces that work in the palms of the hands of those who are are the prophets of Baal. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, anoint our territory that you granted unto us and anoint our feet that have been shod with the preparation of the gospel peace, with the blood of Jesus and with a grace that overcomes the residue left by the feet of Jezebel that seeks to, to take over the territory of the kingdom of God. Now, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the blood of Jezebel that was splattered against the wall. We thank you that according to Psalms 35, that you plead our cause, O Lord, with them that strive with us and fight against those demonic satanic forces and barricades, caves that fight against us. We need you to take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for our help. And as we speak this message, Let your spirit deliver the message in such a way that it overts any hindering opposing spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So we left off with talking about the ways to deal with the spirit of Jezebel. Now the scripture that we're going to be coming from is Revelations 2 verses 18 through 22 as well as 2 Kings 9, verses 1 through 37. And as we read previously on the previous recording from Revelations 2, verses 18 through 22, God was speaking to the church of Thyatira. And he was saying, you know, I'm very pleased with some of the works that you've been doing and even your latest works are even better than the prior works. But I got something against you. And that is that you have not stopped You've tolerated, you've not stopped this stronghold of Jezebel from operating. And it it gives a description of how that stronghold was operating in the mind control and the the sexual devices that distracted and, and deterred the mindset against, literally making the mindset in opposition of the kingdom of God. He goes on to talk about what he's going to do to those who have tolerated the spirit of Jezebel, which is why we prayed the prayer earlier or we stated earlier some things that we have to do to overt or to cover ourselves or to separate ourselves from those entities that tolerate the stronghold of Jezebel from operating. And once we understand that Jezebel doesn't have to do with uh, the wearing of makeup or whoredom, that's not what we're talking about. Although although it does have to do with the uh, unlawful or opposing use of sexual devices. We're talking about the mind control of Jezebel. We're talking about the work that's specifically done against the prophets of God 
and against the citizens of God, the servants of God, working through the palms of the hand, working to hinder, to close doors, to control minds, to stop the work of God from going forward. The residue left by the feet of Jezebel to claim territory, walking about to claim territory and to, and to stop those from going forward and to, to move by the feet of the stronghold of Jezebel into, into forums that was specifically for the kingdom of God to try to infiltrate and to create confusion standing in a place to create confusion and division in that territory planting the feet of the stronghold right in the midst of the kingdom of God in the place where God has placed his name God says I'm angry because you guys tolerated it you're such a wonderful church you do such a great work and yet you're tolerating this so he said in Revelations 2 18 through 22 he goes on to talk about what he's going to do. And this is why we need to repent of that. And then in 2 Kings um, chapter 9, we see that there is a, a story that's told here. And the story is the true account of what took place. So let's go there. 2 Kings. Chapter 9. Now, I'm not going to read all of it, but this account is told in 2 Kings chapter 9, verses 1 through 37. You're going to see me jump around some for the sake of time. Elisha the prophet called one of the children of prophets and said unto him, Go, gird up your loins and take this box of oil in thine hand. Go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest to the son of Jehoshaphat, Jehu, go in and make a make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. So when I prayed earlier on the previous recording, I prayed that God would anoint us with the anointing of Jehu. And if we were not in position to receive the anointing, if we were among certain people that would hinder the anointing, then I pray that God would, would place us, posture us, put us in the location whereby we can receive the anointing given to, to Jehu to destroy the house of Ahab and the works of Jezebel. And here's why. Because here we see he had to get up from among his brethren. And then the servant of the Lord had to take him to her inner chamber in order to give him this anointing. See, there's a thing called observatory energy, observatory energy. It can be negative or positive, but it's observatory energy. And when God needs to do a work, he'll tell you to come out from among them. When he was going to bless the woman who was putting oil, who needed money, and he told her to g gather several pots and then take the oil that you have in your house, go in and close the door behind you. That was so that nobody outside could have an opinion that produced energy that could affect what he was doing and what she was doing by faith. So it's important that we understand to pray that if we're not in a position to receive a certain answer from the Lord that we're asking for, that he would put us, that he would posture us and put us in the right location whereby he can anoint us with the revelation of that answer. So he got him in a place where he could anoint him. He anointed him. He took the box. God said, take the box of oil and pour it over his head and say, thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. This is what he was telling the prophet to do. And that's exactly what took place. He went and talked to Ahab he, and he, excuse me, he went and talked to Jehu. He anointed him. He poured the oil over his head. He had pronounced him king as he was supposed to. And then he told him in verse seven of second um, Kings chapter nine, and thou shalt smite, smite the house of Ahab, thy master that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. So that's exactly what Elijah did. 
And then uh, Jehu, with that anointing, went forth and began to do exactly what God had commanded him to do. I'm going to move forward swiftly. This is a powerful story. You want to read all of it. So, in verse 21, Joram is is talking to um, the king of Israel and to Ahaziah, Ahaziah, king of Judah. And he's letting them know that Jehu is, is riding. And we want to know whether he's coming in peace or not. So Joram goes out there to meet him or Joram because he wants to know, hey, do we need to prepare ourselves or are you coming in peace? Jehu says to him in verse 22, what peace so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. And Joram turned or Joram turned his hands and fled and said to Isaiah, there's treachery. <laughs> but it was too late. Jehu took his bow and he struck. And when he struck, it smote Jehoram between his arms and it went out of his heart. He sunk down in his chariot. That destroyed him. And then Jehu went on to destroy the king of Judah, Ahaziah. And he he let his body fall right there on the grounds, on the plat of ground that used to belong to Nabal, that they took from Nabal, his vineyard. They took it from him. So he left that body right there to die in the place where he had taken land from a servant of the Lord. And as we progress, we see over in verse 32 that as Jehu approached where Jezebel was, Jezebel knew he was coming. See, the word of God lets us know that Jezebel had an anointing of an eavesdropping spirit. So she she had a spirit um, that could go and uh, astral projection we call it the little bird that'll tell the matter and uh, this spirit would let her know she would hear the name of important prophets or servants of the Lord not just any name but servants of the Lord that she was supposed to be coming against so she heard that Jehu was coming she went and prepared herself adorning herself fixing herself up her face and her hair and everything And then she sits in the window. And as he began to approach, he lifted up his face to the window. This is verse 32, 2 Kings chapter 9. And when he lifted up his face to the window, he said, Who is on my side? Who? Then there looked out, out of the window to him, two or three eunuchs. Because when two or three are gathered together in his name, there Christ Jesus said that his spirit of God would be in the midst. So these two eunuchs looked out of the window to indicate we're with you. Then he said, this is what Jehu said, throw her down. Another translation says, cast the witch down. So they threw her down and some of her blood was splattered or speckled on the wall and on the horses and they trawled her underfoot. Then he told him, go out there and bury her. Even though the word of God had already said, the prophet said that her body was not to be buried, that the dogs were going to eat it up. And when they got out there, this is verse 35, all they could see and all that was left was the residue of her body in the form of skull, feet, and the palms of her hand. And remember the blood that was speckled on the wall. I told you a story earlier of how my daughter-in-law had been diagnosed with cancer and how God blessed her and healed her and made her whole and restored her. And some of the treatment 
um, was chemotherapy along with some of the herbal things that God led her to do. And of course, prayer and the anointing. God just moved in her behalf and he gave her a series of things to do and he did a series of things for her. And the bottom line is that with Jesus stripes, she's healed. And so after the second treatment of chemo, the tumor was gone. She knew that because God revealed it to her. She didn't find out until the end of all of her chemo when they gave her the last PET scan. She could actually see that the tumor was gone. But then she, they were told her that she was going to need to take radiation as well. So my question was, why is it necessary for you to take radiation? And she said, well, the doctor said that there is microscopic residue that can't be seen with the naked eye, but it's there. And so we have to do the radiation to remove the microscopic residue because it can be more substantial than the first. Here's what I'm saying to you. Whenever demons are cast out, you want to always remember that there is some residue. If you have an addiction and you get deliverance from that addiction, you're still going to have some cravings in the beginning, but you have to walk through the maintenance that's necessary to be kept as God is washing and cleansing, cleansing your neurology, cleansing your behavior. All of that is important. And so as you continue to wash and to cleanse and to bathe with the word of God day and night, observing to do all according to that is written therein, you're looking in the mirror of who you are. And the spirit of God is transforming you into who you are. So in the beginning, when you get deliverance, you are delivered from that demonic force. But there is a work that has to be done because there's still residue there. And you've got to operate in such a way to be kept from that residue. Because the residue can turn out to be more substantial than the first. There's a maintenance that you have to continue to do. Anybody that's been healed of a major disease will tell you that they continue ma maintenance. If you know Mama Doty. Dodie Osteen, she was healed of a, of a cancer, I think, that affected her liver, if I'm not mistaken. But all of these years, 40, maybe 40 plus years, she has been meditating on the word of God day and night. Healing scriptures that she passes on to others, books that she's written that she passes on to others to help you understand. Marilyn Hickey has healing confessions. Sid Roth has healing confessions. So many that have been delivered from certain diseases, they thank God for the deliverance, but they also understand that they continue a maintenance that ministers to their spirit. The word of God says, it's the spirit of a man that will sustain his infirmities. You've got to keep building your spirit so that your spirit is anointed and equipped to sustain infirmities. Lastly, before I go, I want you to understand the significance of this residue of the stronghold of Jezebel is that its work is to come against the true prophets of God, the real prophets of God and the citizens of the kingdom of God. So when other people who are unbelievers look at you and they say, well, if you're a Christian, why do you go through all of this? Well, because there is a stronghold, there is a force assigned to hinder. It's the residue of Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel. And the appointment, the job, the assignment of this opposing force is to hinder, to stop you from, from moving in certain territories, to hinder the work of God, to hinder those who have their feet shot with the preparation of the gospel peace, from moving it from place to place and subduing certain territories for the kingdom of God. There's a work that's being done even with the mind control. And with the sexual devices. It's a work. But there are prayers that we can pray. And again, I'm going to have to end before I actually um, finish this whole thing. But I wanted to go through it a little bit more than what we had gone through it before. And I want you to look at verse 32. When Jehu said, who is on my side? And the eunuchs came forth as his help. And then he told them to cast down the witch, cast down, throw down Jezebel. Psalms 1, 
18. Psalms 118 verse 6 tells us, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? So as Jehu asks, who is on my side? As you begin to pray over this opposing force, this stronghold of Jezebel, the residue of this stronghold of Jezebel, I want you to remind yourself, bearing witness with Psalms 118.6, just like Jehu asks, who is on my side? He wants to know who is up there that can help me get this done. There is some help up there that can help me get this done against this principality that's high up in high places. You can ask, who is on my side that can help me pull down this demonic stronghold and the residue of this demonic stronghold that sits up high to try to come against me and oppress me? And your answer will be Psalms 118.6. The Lord is on my side. Who is on my side? The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? And you begin to open up your mouth and decree and declare, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And because Jesus is Lord, we can release the Lordship of Christ Jesus over the demonic spiritual residue of the stronghold of Jezebel in my house, in my family, in my ministry, in my health, in my mind, in the works of my head, everywhere the sole of my feet tread, over the blood of Jezebel that's been splattered on the wall in the name of Jesus. I pronounce the Lordship of Christ Jesus. Jesus is Lord. That now his blood go forth and do a work in our behalf. Far above every principality and power. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we thank you for it. Remember Philippians 2.5 says let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. It's important that we have the mind of Christ to protect and to keep us against this residue that exists. 1 Corinthians 2.16, we have the mind of Christ. And we want to remember to nurture the mind of Christ by meditating on the word of God, which is, in the beginning, was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. As we meditate on the word of God, we're literally meditating on the manifested presence of Christ Jesus. Psalms 107, 20 says, he sent his word and healed and delivered them from their destruction. As we meditate on the word of God, he can heal and deliver us from our destruction. As we speak it, the word of God tells us that our tongue is the pen of a ready writer that writes on our heart. The word of God tells us that we are to meditate on the word of God day and night. Observing to do all according to that is written therein. My son, give attention to my word. Why? Because it's health to our flesh. It's life to all that find them and health to their flesh. And we need the deliverance in our flesh. We need the help in our flesh to overcome the residue of the stronghold of Jezebel. Remember, ways and weapons that we have to deal with the microscopic residue of Jezebel, bind the spirit of charismatic witchcraft. And we've talked about that before when we were talking about familiar spirits in previous videos. Keep yourself consistent, consistently giving maintenance by washing and cleansing with the word of God. Please the blood of Jesus Christ over the blood of Jezebel splattered on the wall. Call forth the spirit of Jehu, the one adorned, uh, excuse me, ordained to destroy the stronghold of the residue of Jezebel. Or the stronghold and the residue of Jezebel. So you want to call forth the spirit of Jehu and the adorning and the uh, the added, uh, the, the anointing and the covering of that spirit, the filling of that spirit to overcome the stronghold and the residue of Jezebel. Pray for deliverance from the vortex of Jezebel. Bind the mind control of Jezebel by way of the residue from the skull. Bind the residue of the feet by washing and cleansing everywhere that the spirit 
of Jezebel's feet would attempt to tread. Bind the works of demonic palms that would hinder the work of the gospel. In Revelations 18, 22, excuse me, Revelations 2, verses 18 through 22, we want to stop and repent from eating at the table, lying in the bed with, or yielding ourselves to the sexual devices of the spirit of Jezebel. We want to bind and rebuke and cast out that spirit of Athaliah. It's a destiny-destroying spirit. Athaliah was the daughter of, of Israel's king Ahab and Jezebel and the wife of Jehoram, king of Judah. She was the, the only woman in the Bible to have reigned as mon- monarchy. So, so while Jezebel was covered under the house of Ahab, and, and, but she was under the territory of Ahab, and that territorial warfare had to go forth against the house of Ahab, Athaliah had her own monarchy, her own territory. And and after her son died by the hand of Jehu, she staged a coup, killing all of Ahaziah, who was the king of Judah, all of his heirs, and taking the throne. She reigned for six years, and she was eventually murdered, of course, by by an army general. But before that happened, she tried to kill all of the heirs. And so what what God did was he sent someone to take her out, just like he sent someone to destroy the house of Ahab. That spiritual stronghold of Athaliah comes to destroy our destiny, to cut us off before we even get started, like she did with with killing all of the heirs, some at birth, some before birth. We want to pray the blood of Jesus over this force. We want to bind up, rebuke, and cast out the spirit in the presence of Athaliah and, and the work of this force. Well, as I get ready to close out, I want to thank you so much. I'm praying that you were able to catch both segments so that you'll have more information and understand the significance of why we want to give attention to this. And again, we exalt the authority in the name of Jesus Christ above the name and the authority, the stronghold and the residue of Jezebel. The word Jezebel derives from a Hebrew word that means not exalted. So as much as this force wants to exalt itself, God says, not exalted. It comes from that literal name derives from a word that originally meant not exalted. Reminding you that that force was assigned as an opposing force to the real prophets of God and the true citizens of the kingdom of God. Jehu, on the other hand, means he is God or God is. And he was ordained and anointed to destroy the house of Ahab and the stronghold of Jezebel. Father God, as we close out, we ask again and we thank you that if we're not in the position to receive the anointing that was given to Jehu to destroy the house of Ahab and the works of Jezebel, that you would position us, posture us, get us in a place where you can anoint us with the anointing that was given to Jehu so that we can overcome and destroy not just the stronghold of Jezebel, but withstand and overcome this residue. I want to remind you, as always, to remember to sow into the ministry of Women in Ministry TV. I thank God for this platform that they've granted um, me the opportunity to be a part of, along with some, some great anointed ministers and ministries. Remember to sow into the kingdom. It is uh, into the ministry of Women in Ministry TV as it is very, very, very fertile ground. And you'll see that when you sow. I thank you so much for liking and subscribing to my YouTube channel, for going there and perusing through and for sharing the messages because you don't know who needs this word. But when you share the message, you become a, a minister of the gospel. And there's a blessing in being a minister of the gospel. Well, thank you so much for joining me. 
I'm Jacqueline Battle reminding you that God loves you and I'm praying for you. Bless